All right, so a couple announcements. I have braces on the top teeth again, which is super weird. And I'm comfortable, which you probably won't really notice them if I don't open my mouth a lot. When Pawnee was little, I took my retainer off and put it next to my bed, and I was leaving to work, and Pawnee ate it, and she only ate the top one. She didn't eat the bottom one, so the bottom one's fine. The top one's messed up. They didn't have any more molds in my teeth, so whatever, I had to go back. I got some braces put on. It's just to straighten out some of the four front teeth real quick. Then after the four front teeth are straightened out, they'll give me new retainers, and then we can go back. So I had to get braces really fast, so you'll see some silver metal stuff in my mouth, but I normally don't show a lot of my mouth. Anyways, anyways, today what we're gonna be doing is installing these, I guess I can call them bushing stoppers for the trailing arms like I showed you a couple days ago. I'm gonna be taking those off, uninstalling them, installing new bushings, and then installing the bushing stoppers so that the bushings don't walk out and we don't have play in this system anymore. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's get started. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So, I need to find out what size socket head this is going to be. It's obviously going to be the one that I don't have because I lost it. Number five. Yeah, it's totally number five. That freaking sucks. Whatever, Alan packs to the rescue. It's not a number five, it's standard. I don't have standard in socket form. I have standard in pack though. 530 seconds. Oh, bigger than that. All right, well then I guess it is what it is. 3 sixteenths. Bingo! All right, I need 3 sixteenths for this. I need a 16 for the lollipops or the ratchet. I'll use a hammer. I probably won't need a hammer. I'll probably need channel locks to be honest. I'll use these big old channies I got right here. Let's do it. Oh, one of the things I got the other day while well, you guys weren't with me. I bought one of these rollers from uh, Harbor Freight so that I can avoid laying in dog hair and whatever pee these animals are gonna have because they're dumb. I pee inside. Ryder peed on my wheel again, but I already wiped it up and washed it. I needed something else. Oh, I need the condor bushings, which the dog took and dragged over here. All right, so a problem I didn't realize with the roller is that when you try to leverage on something, you roll around. So what I decided to do was to grab my impact to remove these. Loosen that one up. And we got the two over here. Uh oh, there it is. What the heck am I doing? One loose. Too loose. It's too loose! All right. Take these all the way out. Jeez, I need the car to be higher off the floor. Or I need to lose some weight. There's an idea. This creeper is gonna take some getting used to. Oh, now I can use my other tool that I just bought. I got this Pittsburgh uh, pry bar set. It's four pieces for 15 bucks, I think, uh, from Harbor Freight. I'm not afraid of Harbor Freight tools at all. Kind of number one rule is don't buy anything that's gonna kill you. If you'll notice, the tools that I work with, most of them are either Milwaukee, Harbor Freight, Icon, and then there's just some Craftsman and Snap-on stuff mixed into the bunch. I like Pittsburgh stuff. I don't mind it at all. I think that there's other places you can put your money beside into uh, higher end tools. It does make a difference. I definitely feel the quality difference, don't get me wrong. I don't know. I got other things to buy. There we go. Boom. You can see how loose that thing is on there. It's kind of like ridiculous how loose it is, but it's all blown out. And that's the problem. With the channel locks, I was planning on grabbing this bushing and pulling it out. So this, all this slop is not because the bushing is crappy. It has everything to do with the bushing walking out. Pretty much what it is is that Condor, Condor designed theirs to work with the E36 arm, which would be in this area pretty much where SLR has a longer section of piping here that the bushing can slide onto. So Condor didn't make it for the SLR kit, but they made this bushing to house the E36 M3 arms and stuff. What we're gonna do is figure out how to get this thing to stay on with the uh, horseshoe clamps. All right, so I'm gonna press this in to here by tapping it with my hammer. Not really pressing, <laughs> not pressing at all. Soft hammer, do something nice and with rubber so that you're not destroying the bushing or oblonging it in any way. And it should get to where it's like pretty much flat. Nice and flush. 
Whereas before, it was sitting up to about the black mark and sticking out. Let's see what we can do. Oh, it's going to have to get tapped on, which is fine. I can do that. Oh, goodness. This thing's gonna, she's going to be a fighter. I think my angle's just, my approach is all wrong. I can't get a good swing. Here's what I'll do. Goodness gracious. Why is this so difficult? It's difficult to film this. All right, I'm gonna smack this on. I'll come back because I can't get the right angle with the camera. All right, so this is not going on as smooth as I thought it would. We have to get some different resources. One of those resources being some soap, some dish soap, and the other resource being Hannah Bear to come film. Say hi to Hannah. Hi. hi. Oh. Now I gotta line it up. That's the probably the most annoying part that you're gonna have to do when you do this job is to try to line this whole deal back up. Line this whole arm back up, or this bushing back up with the, uh, put these holes up here. Ah! There it fell in my eyes! Oh! Uh. my face dirt dirt in my face all right so now it's semi lined up what we'll do is we'll start our bolts by hand always by hand first and then we'll snug them for the impact tighten them completely by hand so that we don't rip any any nuts or any threads out of the uh, chassis and have a bigger issue. Bonnie, come. She's next to the Missile Mary, which is also still available in the uh, Missile Mary give back. So if you guys are interested in entering the Missile Mary give back uh, and being a part of the support team, there is a link in the description. You guys have been amazing. It's been going super well. I'm just really excited to start building a Pro 2 car because there's so many things I would do differently. I got a cool question today on Instagram. A young man, I assume, I am assuming your gender, asked a question about what would, let me read the question. Someone by the name, I believe, Ounce or Zone, asked me on Instagram today, he said, quick question with your BMW motor swap, was your original BMW transmission auto SMG or true stick? It was stick. Also, if you could have changed anything before starting your build that you feel would have saved you time, money, and headache, what would it have been? Probably my patience would have saved me time in the long run. Because what happens is when you don't have patience and you want to get things done, you cut corners. And what happens is you end up doing it twice. And if you got money to do it twice, you got enough money to do it once the right way. So if patience followed my desire of build quality, uh, the car would have just came out better all the way around. If there's one specific thing that I would want to change on the car, it would probably be the fabrication work and not because proper did anything wrong more because there's certain things that i've learned that i like from when we started the build to where we are now that i would change that's probably about it everything else i absolutely love about my car more than fabrication just prepping the chassis prepping the chassis a lot more meaning getting rid of some more sound detonating stuff painting the inside properly cleaning up some studs that no longer need to be here things like that not necessarily changing the build just prepping the chassis a little bit better which is what i hope to do with this new car that we're going to be building here sh shortly that's honestly why it's a good idea that we're starting this whole pro 2 build now a lot of people have mistaken and thought that Mike is on at Pro 2 already and are asking if he's going to be at the next race. He's still in Pro-Am, but we're very hopeful and we already have sponsors who are down to start with the build. That's why we're starting way earlier in the year, even though we're in the middle of season still, because of the past with the Hail Mary and the Missile Mary going through it all rushed, right. like literally having no time, overworking your friends. <laughs> Overworking proper. Thank you, Frankie, Anthony, Hugo. Thank you, guys. Plant, all you guys, thank you. It's a good experience, though, because we're learning to... It kind of helps you. Even with us being rushed, we're still able to build such a freaking amazing car. So, the uh, retaining clamp. Uh, we'll call it that. We'll call it the retaining clamp. As you can see, it makes up the difference in space from the SLR arm to where the Condor Speed Shot bushing sits. And now... 
now there is no movement now you can see there's no uh, flexing or, or moving in it like there was before. And what this will do is it'll just help keep the bushing in the, in the pocket there or in the uh, Condor lollipop bracket. Ho, oh, oh. There it is. Right, no, no, right, right, right here. Oh. Yeah, baby. Condor Speed Shop holds these SLR arms in. You know what I'm talking about? All right, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out the way, get out the way. Now, if you look at the forward and backward play on the whole system, it's literally just turning now. There's no play in the arm. I'll grab it from here. No more slop in the front control arm. Those stops seem like they're gonna work pretty well. It looks pretty cool under there. I like the way that that works. But these blown out bushings are no more. Uh, you could really see how bad they were. But those are replaced now. Shout out to Condor Speed Shop. Thank you guys for the speedy delivery and the excellent parts. Those stoppers that I found, I found those at a local hardware store. They are, I don't know exactly what they're called, but you can see they're the two rainbow half circle shapes, but they're th the size is a three quarter on them. The ID is a three quarter ID, meaning inner diameter. You can get those at McFaddendale, probably Ace Hardware, probably any hardware store that you have near you that sells that. If not, go online and find it. I don't know what it's called, but that was pretty easy. It literally only took like 10 minutes to do. I think that's it for today. I still have to put tires on my Hokkaidos. I have not done that. I was gonna do it, but then I had to go get the braces done, so I didn't have time in the morning to load everything up. And then we'll start doing like a whole bolt check on the car and getting all that stuff figured out soon too. We'll go ahead and get it a line, change the oil. Oh, and then proper has the box is almost ready for the rear camber arm box that I showed you guys that was bent. It's almost ready. As always, thank you guys for supporting us. Thank you for watching the channel. We have some ideas that we want to do. So we're going to be filming some reaction stuff, some more unboxing stuff, more tub time. And then we want to do something like, like we were talking about the podcast. I see you guys responding to that pretty positively. The way I'd want to set it up is more of a YouTube live thing and set up in, in like a setting where we're kind of sitting out here. There's a few of us on here. Maybe I have like a main co-host where it's just kind of recording all of us sitting together talking about whatever, maybe subjects you guys give. So if you want, if you're still here in this video, comment below some subjects you want us to talk about, whether it be best drift chassis, engine, things like that. Obviously the stuff is going to be subjective to what we like because drifting setup is very much so like a driver it's a driver based type of thing one way doesn't work the best for every driver every driver has a certain preference is what i'm trying to say guest for tub time i know you guys said gary king jr which would be super cool to have him out i know gary gary would probably definitely come out knowing him he'd probably jump in the back with me we could definitely hit up gary for that any other ideas that this the, the content gets better with the help of the people who are demanding the content. So tell me your demands. Tell me the things that you would desire to have on our shows, and we'll keep going. But those are a couple, a couple of the, those are a couple of the ideas that we have. So stay tuned. It might not be a daily Diaz every day, but there should be a video coming out almost every day. We're definitely gonna take Sundays off because Sundays for church. But we'll have videos at least every day. If not every other day, if not, then maybe once a year, who knows, maybe a decade. We'll see what happens, but we're going to keep going with it. It hasn't been too difficult just yet because I have things that I could actually do and show you that I'm doing. Um, he's not the one editing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Hannah, Hannah works full time, uh, whole task, so she has time to edit. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you're missing any of the videos, don't forget to turn on notification posts because subscriptions don't mean anything today. Just kidding. That's a lot of crowd reference. Yeah, thank you guys so much for all of your help. Let's see where this goes. And I actually have stories to tell you about Pro 2 Car, but there's a really cool story behind the Pro 2 Car that I want to share with you guys. Maybe one of these days when I don't have any content to film. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. As always, stay safe. See you later.